I'm Angus Cress Gillespie, and this is uh, Old Ways in New Jersey, and it's our privilege uh, to be hosted by Johanna today up here in uh, Warren County in northwestern New Jersey. It's such a privilege to see something like this, which was made by the uh, Limonaire brothers in Paris uh, many, many years ago uh, and was uh, hidden from the Nazis during World War II, was reassembled after the war, and then reconstructed recently. And uh, it's uh, Johanna's pride and joy, and it's so nice of her to uh, share it with us today. Johanna, as I understand it, uh, a street organ, it's a mechanical organ, and it's designed to play in the street. Yeah, it, it is almost correct. Almost correct. Almost correct. It, it was original made for a carousel, inside uh, of a carousel. Okay. And in southern European countries, they can play a carousel the whole year round. Uh, but when the carousel came to the Netherlands, then there was no way to have the family fairs during the winter, uh, because the weather is not so good in the winter. I see. So then they took the street or they took the organ out, put it on a pushing cart, and then it became a street organ. Ah, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, the people who operated it, they were called organ grinders, I understand. Yes, yeah. that's correct. And many of them um, would finance this operation by begging for money. Well, I don't want to call it begging. Yeah. Because if you perform something for people, and you make them happy, and you do the sound and the music, and then is it not begging? Okay. I mean, they work hard for the money. They have yeah. to push it, and they have to crank it, and they have to keep it in a good shape, and it costs yeah. money. So that was not begging. Okay. If, if you're not happy with the term begging, how about the term busker? Was that more comfortable for that you? That is better. Okay. But maybe it means the same. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've read uh, that there's two main styles, the German style, which is smaller, and the larger uh, Dutch style from the Netherlands. Well, uh, they had them all different sizes. Uh -huh. uh, this is where the original came from, the little tiny ones that yes. were in Italy, they had a monkey. Yeah. Uh, they were more traveling from little village to another village, and they just had it on a cart and a horse, yeah. you know, the little. Yes. And then it became bigger and bigger, and there is a whole different kind of street organs around in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. It's my understanding that the period when these instruments flourished was roughly between 1850 and 1920. Is that consistent? Yeah, with that is a good time. Yeah, yeah okay. it's a good time frame. Yeah. And one of the advantages, with no disrespect to you, uh, was that they could be operated by an unskilled person. Uh, you didn't of course, have if you have muscles, you know, <laughs> you have to get something, you know, that you can crank it yeah. for hours and hours. So. But you didn't have to have musical training. No, absolutely not. No. 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 And the, I find the cutoff date of the 1920s is kind of interesting. Possibly it was the rise of uh, phonographs and radios that tended to crowd out the street organs. D does that seem right to you? Yeah, it was all in the beginning from the from music over, uh, like for the public, louder yeah. than normal, an accordion player out on the yeah. street, or a person that has a violin, you know, did this more, more volume. Yeah. Yeah, it is perhaps something to do with it. Because of the, the age and antiquity of such things, I don't imagine there are too many for sale in Holland. So I guess my question would be, how did you manage to find a, a willing seller? There must be a story. He was, he was not willing to sell it at all. <laughs> no, no, no. I tell you a little story about street organs before the Second World War. Okay. There were many, of course. many street organs. During the Second World War, they 
took the street workers apart. They put them in basements, in attics, because they were so afraid that the Germans, the Nazis, were taking them away from them. Uh, so after the Second World War... They were hidden. Yeah. Yeah. In pieces. Yeah. One piece there, one piece there. Uh -huh. So it was a, like a puzzle to get street organs back. Yeah. And that did, they did. After the Second World War, the, the pieces all put together, and there the street organs were out on the streets again. Yeah. Not too many, because an awful lot of work, you know, to put them together. This particular street organ was 35 years in pieces in different attics and basements. The men that want to make the street organ in one piece again was a young gifted guy and grandson from a very very known family that made street organs and restored them and he did let's say maybe about five six years working on it to get the street organ back wow and then it was finished and the coincident was that i was in the netherlands looking for a street organ to buy for my husband this was not for sale he wanted to show it to me, but he don't want to sell it, didn't want to sell it. So I told him, I said, well, it will be in a good family because I play accordion on met both sides of buttons. My husband is crazy about the street organ, really, because we we always admire that instrument. And he said, no, I don't want to sell it, no. He said, my grandfather sold a street organ, you know, to people, and he always felt sorry when he saw it somewhere in the street. He said, no, we like to keep it, I like to keep it. Maybe if it goes to America, he said, maybe then I will sell it. I said, but I live in America. He said, I don't believe you. You don't speak American accent at all. <laughs> I said, but I have, I really. So I show him my, my license, you know, my driving license. And he said, uh, well, he said, maybe. He said, if it is really true, I have to think about it. I said, my husband is coming also later. I said, maybe le later in the year. I said, please think about it. I don't even want to know how much you want for it, but think about it. You will sell it to him, I know for 100%. And make a long story short, it came to the United States in a big container. Let me, ask, let me ask a follow-up question to that: Is why the fact that it was coming to America? Why did that melt his heart? How did that change his mind? Did he, he did he think it was? Uh, I, my husband promised him he can come any time to the United States, and my wife take care of your whole family. Uh, <laughs> and he did for <laughs> vacations. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, he did. And, and he took you up on that? Of course. Yeah. A couple of months later, when the street organ was here, it had to be retuned, you know, because it was off to me. Yeah. So he called him and he said, uh, Gerhard, he said, if you want to come, he said, take your wife and your child. He said, that you can stay so long you want. He said, because I need a tuning and I pay you for it. He said, and I will pay also your, 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 your fares, right? He said, but my wife have one thing. He said, if you can make some signs outside on her boutique, but similar ladies, uh, he said, then she will be happy, I'm happy, and you will be happy. Uh, and he did, and he stayed here at least four weeks. Yeah. When I was driving up the road to your house, yeah. one of the ways I could instantly tell it was your place yeah. was because of the It became almost painting. a street organ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Johanna, how did you go about restoring your street organ? Uh, what were the steps involved? Uh, for example, uh, the cabinet and the works. I imagine it was quite a production to bring this up to snuff. It is. The, uh, the cabinet is not a really a big thing. You know, we keep it nice and it's always in storage. Most of the time the same temperature. But uh, the mechanical part had last year a major problem. Uh, the hoses and the pipes, they all connected. And it needs at least once in the three years a major make up not an, a tuning let's say that and then they take care of it like your car you know they look and all the stuff it didn't work anymore it was making sounds like oh oh boo, boo, and that was it uh -huh. uh, uh, and there was no melody anymore so i had to call gearhart and he said what do you did with it i said i don't know it is completely it don't work anymore can you come over because i had to do two day affair in you know a couple of weeks later oh victorian He's, days yes victorian days so he came and uh, well, I tell you, I, uh, it was like I had a lecture. He said, it is because of you, Johanna. You don't take good care of it. You have to play it at least every week. 
to let it run, get the air through it. Ah. He said, and I have to take a lot of things apart and I will get it back in time. And he worked now, I think, till 10 days in a row, from the morning, early in the morning to late at night, took it apart, cleaned it all, tuned everything, put it back together. And every time when I came back, back from my work, he had something done. I said, do you think that it will work in the Victorian days? He said, it will work. And it did. And then he told me that when my husband passed away seven years ago, that a street organ, he said, you have to realize, a street organ, whatever it is, he said, but a street organ, no, have a soul. He said, and the soul was missing Tom, because you don't take care of it. Ah. I said, I do. I said, no, you don't. He said, so I will tell you, it is tuned. I put some violins in it. Can you believe it? Like you said, like that, no. He put a violin sound in it. He said, and if you don't feel that and you don't hear this, the, the violins there, he said, then you have to make yourself huh. trained for that. So I huh. did. And it is too, after a few times when I listened to it, I said, yeah, the violins, they're playing well. That is the soul, but huh. you know what Gerhard told me. That's really interesting. The, yeah. the fact is, you have to play it at least once a week. To, at least once a week. Otherwise, it gets rusty. And, and it gets the air in it, and it gets damped. You know, ah. it gets damped. And then, it is inside, it is all natural fiber. There's no plastic in or You know, yeah. it is all wood. There is cardboard. There is canvas. There it's, is leather. It's too bad he didn't tell you that in the first place. Well, I didn't have to because Tom was the one that played it almost every day. Ah. You know, he was there every time and was ah, playing it. Ah, I see. So it had no time to get, you know, damped or whatever. Yeah. Um, now, as far as the works go, it has pipes, that's obvious. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it has percussion, that's obvious. Does it have horns as well? Uh, it has, um, in the sound of the tuning, you have flutes. Real flutes. The sound is like a real flute. Okay. He has the violins in it now. He has the drums, but they're the real drums yeah. and cymbals and castanets. So some of the pipes are tuned to resemble yeah. a violin. Yeah. Uh, I see. It's amazing. I see. It's amazing. And from from what I understand, uh, are these Bourdon pipes? There is in there. Uh -huh. He put that in later when he came here for the first time. When we ask him, he put the Bourdons. And that is a very different sound too. For, for, for the benefit of our listeners, the Bourdon pipes are, are thick walled, is that not so? Yeah. And, and they're made of wood. Yeah. So they're very special. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you know, about wood, all the pipes are wood. Uh -huh. But the Bourdon is the, 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 the sound that you recognize a thousand. Yeah. It is a different sound. Very distinctive. Very, yeah. Do you usually uh, dress in period costume when you're uh, uh, going to a uh, If it is asked, you know, yeah. I uh, went to the opening from the ING Bank in Wall oh. Street and uh, they came public and they asked me to have uh, nine girls in a wooden outfit, a wooden shoes and a wooden costume, of an and Dutch costume. And uh, we did. Yeah. I uh, I had nine girls, American girls, that was pretending that they came from Volendam, <laughs> and the only word that they uh, say "Dank u wel." That yeah. is what I told them. You know, "Dank u wel." Then you sound like Dutch. You know? that means "Thank you very much." Yeah. But that was very nice. And um, Renaissance, I did also. And did Victorian. You, did Did you make the costumes for these girls? Yes, I did. Yeah. I'm a costumer. Yeah, that's yeah. that's your other life. That is my real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in addition to that ING uh, uh, opening in Wall Street, yeah. where, where else have you been booked to play? Uh, then I was also asked for the uh, telecommunication uh, from the Netherlands, open up uh. the market, you know, they became public in Wall Street. Then I went to Sabars, the enormous, nice, yeah. upscale supermarkets, you know, yeah. in New York. Uh, we went to for a book signing from an, um, an author by Barnes and Nobles and a book launching, um, you know, different kind of use, unusual things. Caesars in Atlantic City. Oh, really? 
Yeah, yeah. when they uh, rebuilt a whole new part in the casinos and we were in the parade, a big elephant was up front of us, you know. That was <laughs> That's and nice. weddings and anniversaries yeah. and block parties. We do a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. It'd be wonderful for an anniversary. It's wonderful. Yeah. It makes the people happy. Some yeah. people start to cry. Last year I was invited for a uh, party. I was an anniversary for a lady with 80 years old. It was her birthday party actually, but she had a lot of family over. Yeah. She was Dutch. And then the son, the, the son, what was the son? He said, Can you do for my mom? He said, The little girl by the windmill. That is a song, you know? Yeah. I said, No problem. I can do everything, you know? But I cannot play. I play piano or accordion, but I can, you know, not make a well, song. Well, I need the books. Yeah. This, this, some street organs, as I understand, had keyboards, but this one does not. No. Yeah. That is real in, in, in street organ. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So I thought by myself, how can I do this? You know, these people, they waiting, waiting for the song that I put, the little girl by the windmill, you know, and this is a very known song. In, in Holland? So, yeah, in Holland, yeah. not here. Of course, we have no windmills. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> they came down the steps, you know, and she was ready to dance. And she said, and? She said, you found it? I said, what about if you do a tango? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, how do you know? That is my favorite dance. <laughs> I really, I was so happy because they were dancing the tango, uh, and that was something nice. Because you didn't really have. No, of course the, not. Yeah, I don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice. That was yeah. it. Now, as I understand it, this originally was designed to be turned with a crank, a handle, uh, but but at some point it got the electric belt drive. When did that transition take place? When. Um, when it started, when the people getting sick and tired, <laughs> so everything goes, you know, they find for a mechanical, turn it in an electrical. They, um, they didn't find people really that want to crank five hours or six hours. You know what I'm saying? That was, and, the, and when they came on a little motor or a generator or a battery, you know, and the belt do the same thing and it goes over the pulley and it goes over the big yeah. wheel. The effect from the street organ is the same. Yeah. And sometimes I let people do it by hand, they want to, and I said, huh. where is the man that do the cranking? I said, you want to be one? I said, might be my guest, and I take the belt off oh. and I put the knob on it. And two seconds later, they all, <gasps> because they they not be able to do it. What is a barrel organ? And how does that differ from a book organ? A better organ, I think that is with metal pipes. Mm. It goes more on steam. Mm. And it has a different kind of books. A bell organ that goes in an, in a circle. The books like are on a big connected. cylinder. Yes. Yeah. The books is back. It's not an end and a beginning. It yeah. goes maybe for uh, ten yeah. minutes. The same. It goes back. It's a it's so, different sound too. It yeah. sounds more with bells and, and bells and, and, and metal sound in yeah. it. Yeah. It, now, this is a book organ, right? I mean, because the, 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 the what you use are, are basically sheets of perforated cardboard. That's correct. And, yeah. and the holes indicate to the machine yeah. what note to play. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, we could argue that this is one of the first computers. Is so? Yeah. 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 It's amazing, isn't it? It is. Now, um, Obviously, looking at the facade of your street organ, this was uh, manufactured by Limonaire Frères, the Limonaire brothers. Uh, they were headquartered in Paris, as I understand. The Limonaire brothers, they brought a system in, a yeah. special system. They, they invented that system. Yeah. yeah. And it is, you can almost say, it is the Cadillac under the cars. Yeah. The Limonaire system is very refined, very special. The sound from the Limonaire system, you always can recognize it. You say, yeah. hey, here's a car of Frey, yeah. street organ too. It's beautiful, but it's different. Yeah. And, a car, and the, the, the Limonaire have a an, yeah, an happier sound. Yeah, it's very festive. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the Limonaire brothers uh, of Paris were so famous for in their street organs was their wonderful Art Nouveau facades. And so I'm going to ask Johanna to give us a little walk around to the facade and explain what we're looking at. Johanna, can we start with, with the name? Uh, via, how do we pronounce that? Via? Violanta. Violanta. The Violanta. Okay. Is that, is, explain what the Violanta is. Well, every organ in the Netherlands, and probably also over on the countries, 
they have a name, an organ have its name. This is the man that had the system. L Limon Limonair, Limonair is, is the manufacturer. Yeah. The maker. Almost, yeah. And the Violanta is the name of the street organ. Is, is, that, a, is the, that a particular... It's a personal name. It means little powerful. Little powerful. And does each individual street organ have its each name, or is yes. it a model name? No. It's not a model name. No. It's an individual name. Yes. Okay. And people talking about the Violanta, or the cement molen, or whatever they call, because they know what they're talking about. Okay. It is not the organ from D and D, you know, from yeah. such and such, but it is the name. They have and, the name. And in this figure, uh, this I've noticed that that he's sort of like the conductor. He has he has a baton, and the baton moves yeah. uh, according to the rhythm of the music. This hand goes down when the music comes lower, and the lower keys, you know, then uh. he put that hand down. Then it is all connected to the lower keys. This one goes up when the higher keys play. So it is all connected with the sound from the melody. And, and the two women on either side, they're bilaterally symmetrical. Uh, do, do they have any symbolic meaning? I don't think so. This okay. is the decoration. This is what Gerhard put on the street organ because he repainted the whole thing. Uh, you know, when he found it back, he, he did that. It did, was a scene, but was, he did a better job on it. Was he able to copy the original colors? There or was, the, the colors were completely gone. I mean, uh, there was stuff for 35 so he, years in the basement. You know how you find a piece of wood. So he had to, like, reinvent it. Then. Reinvent it, and, of, you know, of course, from the style and the time, he got his... Uh, his ideas. What about the beautiful ladies on the left? They and right? are that, that is still from the time when it belongs to the gypsies. Oh. There's a lot of gypsy people on an, on, a, on a street organ because they were actually all the originators, you know, from yes. there. I mean, they were the people that because, traveled. Because the Roma were the travelers. There you go. Okay. There and, you go. And, and the center portrait, it's a landscape. Um, can, is, can you tell us about the landscape? This is Holland. This is the country. If you go to Holland and you go to the country, then you see this is still there. It has nothing to do with the year 2009 or the year 1600. It is still there. The old house, the little boats, the people, the cows. Is this, is, a, is this a canal? That is a little canal, yeah. Okay. And this yeah. would this would be a canal boat? That uh, is a canal. That is a, that almost a, a, a trekschuit. You see, they're pulling it the middle road. Oh, along a towpath. Yeah. And, and would this be a farmhouse then? That is a farmhouse. Okay. Yeah. And it's, that is probably a kind of a dike, right? Ah. Because the farmhouse is lower. Kept the water out, country. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, on the side, it's, it's almost like a seashell. Uh, yes. All that is underneath North Sea. So, uh, that there is, you know, you see that is from the Netherlands. Uh, they, there are so many things in, even here, you see his logo from Gerhard. Oh. The, the original owner who sold it to you and, yeah. and restored it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now let's go around to the back and look at the works. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's do a, a walk around in terms of the back of the street organ. Uh, over here, this is the percussion. It's a drum, obviously. And here's the electric motor. Mm -hmm. which turns the flywheel, mm -hmm. which is carefully governed in terms of the pacing of the music to get the right tempo. Yeah. And that in turn turns this wheel. And then when you want to play music, uh, could you show us what you would do? You, yeah, you, you, I you, will. you pick out a piece uh, from, the, from the book. A book. Okay, so Stars and Stripes. Stars and Stripes. And, and we have it, it's made no out problem. of perforated cardboard, yeah. which is stacked up. Okay. okay. And then, uh, Johanna, you're going to load the uh, book. Okay. Goes in here, on the side. You open it up, to the tracker bar. And then you push it in. You close it up. And there you go.
to do something the old-fashioned way. Normally, uh, this street organ is powered by an electric motor, but we're going to go back to yesteryear, and Johanna's going to let me uh, turn the crank. And uh, meanwhile, she'll solicit the money from the uh, listeners. <laughs> and and uh, what we uh, have uh, selected uh, for our final tune is Some Broken Hearts. And uh, the trick for me will be to turn the crank at the correct speed, not yeah. too fast and not too slow. But this is my first time, so, so be easy on me. And it's not live, so it's okay. Be done, okay. Okay. Are we ready? Okay, here we go.